Assalamu alaikum in this video we are going to discuss general anesthesia in the contents of this video include introduction to general anesthesia induction agents muscle relaxants techniques of administration maintenance of anesthesia airway management and ventilation monitoring during anesthesia and recovery from general anesthesia First of all let's understand what anesthesia means. It's a state of controlled temporary loss of sensation and awareness and it keeps the patient comfortable and pain free during the medical procedure. And before administering anesthesia it is important to assess the fitness of patient to estimate the risk for anesthesia during the surgery. For which American Society of Anesthesiologists adopted the six category physical status system. Here you can pause the video for a minute and read the description of each class. Then based on the health of the patient and the procedure the anesthetist will administer one of the following types of anesthesia general regional or local anesthesia or maybe even a combination of any two so let's go into the details of general anesthesia it will be given if the procedure is extensive takes a long time or requires the patient to be in an uncomfortable position it induces a triad of unconsciousness analgesia and muscle relaxation and it can be administered by an intravenous agent or an inhalation agent The commonly used IV agents include propofol, thiopentane, etomidate and ketamine. Propofol is the most commonly used because it provides a better hemodynamic stability and it can also be used for maintenance of anesthesia by continuous infusion. Whereas thiopentane provides a rapid induction but it can cause myocardial infarction and hypotension and it also reduces the metabolic rate and intracranial pressure due to which it is useful in neurological patients. Etomidate provides a good hemodynamic stability and it has brief duration of action but it can cause adrenocortical depression. Ketamine preserves blood pressure and respiratory reflexes and it also provides excellent analgesia. This is why it is an ideal choice for field anesthesia but it also poses a risk for emergence delirium. Now moving on to inhalation anesthetics, sevoflurin is the most commonly used because of its rapid onset of action and recovery. It is useful in children, needle phobic adults and those in whom a difficult airway is anticipated because it has minimal effects on respiratory mechanics with little airway irritation. Initially I mentioned that general anesthesia also provides muscle relaxation. So it is achieved by using depolarizing or non-depolarizing muscle relaxants. Succamethonium is the most commonly used depolarizing agent and it is the most rapidly acting of all the muscle relaxants. This is why it is useful when rapid endotracheal intubation is required or during short duration surgery. It also has some adverse effects like diffuse muscle pain, hyperkalemia, myoglobinemia, anaphylaxis and malignant hyperthermia. So it is contraindicated in patients prone to hyperkalemia, especially burn victims. Now the non-depolarizing muscle relaxants provide a longer and predictable activity but they have a slower onset as compared to succamethonium and they also require reversal of their actions by agents such as neostigmine and sugar medex at the end of the procedure this group includes atracurium vicuronium and rocuronium rocuronium is an alternative to succamethonium as it allows reversal of its action with sugar medex in a rapid manner now moving on to the techniques of administration of anesthesia There are several techniques available one of which is rapid sequence induction in which a predetermined dose of IV agent together with rapidly acting muscle relaxant is given to achieve rapid control of the airway so it is most commonly indicated in emergency surgery or when there is a high risk of gastric regurgitation into the lungs also known as pulmonary aspiration and in any non emergency surgery in a patient with delayed gastric emptying it allows induction of anesthesia within 30 seconds in tracheal intubation within 60 to 90 seconds Another technique which is becoming increasingly popular is total intravenous anesthesia. It uses a combination of agents given exclusively by the IV route without the use of inhalation agents. Teva offers several potential advantages like decreased incidence of post-operative nausea and vomiting, better hemodynamic stability, more predictable and rapid recovery, and reduced atmospheric pollution as caused by inhalation agents. It comprises of propofol, ultra-short acting opioid and neuromuscular blockade. and the ventilation is maintained by a mixture of air and oxygen instead of endotracheal intubation it is commonly used in neurosurgical procedures airway laser surgery during cardiopulmonary bypass and day case anesthesia so after the induction of anesthesia by a suitable technique the next step is maintenance of anesthesia throughout the duration of the procedure which can be achieved by continuous infusion of iv agents like propofol or by inhaled vapors such as isoflurane sevoflurane or desflurane Nitrous oxide was also used widely as an inhalation agent but its use is now declining due to concerns over postoperative nausea and vomiting myelosuppression and megaloblastic anemia and it also increases the size of air bubble causing adverse effects for example in eye air or abdominal surgeries 
and finally it's possibly mutagenic and it is a powerful greenhouse gas. Now in a state of anesthesia due to the loss of muscle tone the patient can no longer keep their airway open and the use of muscle relaxants will mean that the patient will also be unable to breathe. So proper airway management and artificial ventilation are also required during anesthesia. For the airway management, head tilt chin lift and jaw thrust maneuvers along with adjuncts such as oropharyngeal airways are used to facilitate back wall ventilation while induction agents exert their full effect. After anesthesia induction, laryngeal mask airway or endotracheal tube are inserted to allow the patient to breathe spontaneously. But if the spontaneous ventilation is inadequate or the patient is not breathing at all, then mechanical ventilation is provided, either by volume controlled ventilation or pressure controlled ventilation. In VCV, a preset volume of air is delivered by the machine irrespective of the airway pressure. Whereas in PCV, the ventilator maintains a set airway pressure, so the pressure is constant while the tidal volume can be variable depending on patient's characteristics. Next thing is to monitor patient physiologic variables throughout the surgery as anesthesia in surgery can cause rapid changes in vital functions. A minimum basic monitoring of cardiopulmonary parameters is required. This includes ECG and blood pressure monitoring and monitoring of inspired oxygen concentration, oxygen saturation by pulse oximetry and end-tidal carbon dioxide concentration. Monitors of temperature to avoid hypothermia, ventilation parameters and delivery of anesthesia are also routinely used while monitoring of urine output and central venous pressure are recommended for major surgery. Lastly, after the operation, the anesthetist will stop the anesthetic and patient will gradually wake up. He should be closely supervised in this period because a common complication after general anesthesia is inadequate breathing, which can result from obstruction of the airway, central sedation from opioid drugs or anesthetic agents, hypoxia or hypercarbia, and hypocarbia from mechanical overventilation. So if any of these complications is suspected, then it should be addressed. This was everything about general anesthesia. Thank you for watching.